Steve Dotto here. How the heck you doing this fine day? Me, I'm itching to get to some wonderful questions in this installment of Ask Dotto Tech. What are we going to be talking about today? We're going to be talking a little bit about custom calendars in Google Calendars. We're going to be talking more about Google Photos and how to back up your photos in Google Photos and sharing options and emailing options from within Evernote. Oh, they are great questions today on Ask Dotto Tech, so I encourage you to stick around. One of the things that we get asked a lot about is Google Photos, the relatively new photo synchronization and backup service from Google. And the question has been asked many times in the community about how to backup copies of your Google Photos so that you can have a local hard drive backup. I didn't have a great solution uh, for anybody, but fortunately David Sloan has been following the conversation. David says, love your videos. Thanks, David. If you want to back up all your photos and everything else, here's a document. Now he sent me to a document and the document leads to this service from Google, which I didn't know about until David pointed it out. It's called Google Takeout, and if we take a wee gander at Google Takeout, look at what it allows us to back up onto our local drives. Wow, all of our bookmarks, our calendars, our contacts, which is pretty darn useful, and here we have all of your photo albums. So you can actually go here and you can download your Google data and store it on your hard drive. So if we choose this one here, uh, let's just, just, can I turn off everything? Select none, there it is. Let's just go to Google Photos and see what happens when we go and select that and we go to the next one. We choose our format, download it as a zip file, and then now we can create an archive of our photos. Pretty cool, thanks so much, David Sloan. We will have links to Google Takeout in the notes. Before the next question, I thought I would show you how to ask questions of me for Ask Dotto Tech. Now, you're probably watching this video in YouTube. Uh, you could be watching it on our website. So it's, it's kind of two different ways. If you're watching on our website, I encourage you to send any questions to info at dottotech.com. If you send me an email at to info at dottotech.com, I will do my best to answer your question. But an even better way is click on view this video in YouTube. You'll find a little button below. And if you do that, you'll see that we have a comments area here down below that allow you to comment on the video that you're watching. Uh, just post your question in here. I check the comments every single day. Well, actually, I'm on holiday right now, so I might check them every other day, but I read through every single comment, find the good questions, pull them out, and then I can answer them on the next or a future installment of Ask Dotto Tech. So that's the best way to get your question answered. Send us an email, that will work, info at dottotech.com, but even better, post it in the comments area because in the comments area, somebody else might see it and they might even have a better answer than do I. We're gonna come up with a slightly better system for doing this with actually a Facebook group coming down the pipe, but that's a couple of weeks away. So in the meantime, just ask the questions here in the, in the comments area below. And while you're there, you might wanna give us a thumbs up. That's always a nice thing to do as well. As usual, quite a few questions about getting more out of Evernote. Now, Rex sent me an, a note uh, that says he can find a fair bit of info on how to email documents into Evernote. Of course, anytime you're in your email software, if you're using the Evernote premium version, if you want to take that email and store it in Evernote, you can just send it directly to an Evernote inbox. Uh, been doing that for a long time, and uh, Ray has, or sorry, Rex has discovered that that it works very well for him. However, he says it. Uh, he, he shouts to the heavens. However, what it does not seem to work so well for is emailing documents out of Evernote. Heaps of information on emailing in, not so much on emailing out. Well, Rex, let me show you a couple of different ways to email documents out of Evernote to individuals. Now, the first that I'm going to show you uh, is kind of a... Uh, uh, I would say it's more of a workaround than a true email system, uh, but that is using the sharing tool. So anytime you're in any document at all, so let's just let's just grab a newsletter here. I got my, one of my newsletters that's in here. Uh, let's just grab this. Let's say I wanted to share to email this document, this this nice newsletter that I created. Let's say I want to send that to somebody. So I click under the share button at the top of the Evernote uh, at the Evernote note field, 
and there I can copy the public link. This public link is basically a web address that allows people to view whatever document I have, cre uh, I have shared in their web browser, regardless of whether or not they have Evernote. So I've just copied that. Let me jump over into a web browser. Web browser. Let me drop over into a web browser and I'm pasting that URL. You see right here, the URL is pasted in the top and I'm gonna hit enter and there, that document we can see in a web browser. Now, if people do have Evernote, they can save the document to Evernote, but they can view whatever document you are sharing using this technique, this technique of going share note. But there is even a more elegant way to do that. And it's kind of buried within Evernote. I don't know why they bury this so deeply inside Evernote, but it does even a nicer job and it sends it out as an HTML email. Let's look at that same uh, uh, Evernote note, which is right here. And let's look at it here in the, in the list, in the inbox within, or in the, in the, in the note list within Evernote. Now, if I right click my mouse, on that document, I've got an option here called more sharing. Again, I don't really know why Evernote buries this so deeply, but if we go here in more sharing, I can choose to email a copy of this note. And it brings up a little dialog box, which, launch, which launches our preferred email app. In this case, it's gonna launch Google, I think it's launching Google's email app, Gmail. Uh, at any rate, let me just send that to myself. <sighs> let me just send it to me. There we go, and I will show you what it looks like. I'm just gonna send. It takes the entire document, it looks in your address book, and then it sends it to you. So if we leap over into our email, we have there a document that has been emailed to me. So now people don't have to open the link. See the way that I was showing you earlier, you'd have to open the link. But in this particular case, you get the entire email embedded. In this case, here's my newsletter again. Uh, but it is, uh, it's sent to you that way. So Rex, that's the way that I would choose to share or to email a document from within Evernote. Now, Gord Hines has a question about Google calendars. Uh, hi, Steve, Gord says. I'm certainly enjoying the new Ask Steve. Actually, it's Ask Dotto Tech Gord, but close enough, it's brand new. Uh, I've been a fan since Dotto's Data Cafe, which, for those of you who don't know, is a TV series I did here in Canada way back in the day. His question to do with Google Calendar. He's installed a custom Canadian calendar holiday and would like to know if there's a way he can delete other provinces' holidays. Because he's not too civically minded is our good friend Gord. He doesn't want to celebrate holidays that are specific to New Brunswick if he happens to live in Alberta. Understandable, Gord. Unfortunately, I don't have a good answer for you. When I take a look at the uh, at the calendar uh, option, now, to give you some background for this, anybody that isn't using Google Calendar or hasn't installed custom calendars, we can install special calendars that have pre-made dates in them. For example, I have holidays in Canada plugged in here. So you can see in green, I've got Canada Day. Here I've got None of It Day. Well, I don't live in None of It. I live in British Columbia, so I might want to remove None of It Day. So if I click on that, I can go into more details. And unfortunately, there doesn't seem to be a way to edit it and remove that particular, uh, that particular event. So it appears to me that when you install one of these custom calendars, it's all or nothing. That's the bad news. Now, if anybody knows a better way or knows of a way that we can edit these installed calendars, please let us know in the comments area below. And if you're wondering how we get these calendars, let me show that because that is useful. Under the gear icon in Google Calendar, you can go into your settings and in settings, you have, you have general settings and you have something called calendars. You click on the calendars, the little button here at the very top, and this allows you to subscribe to other people's calendars. This is where we go to share calendars with our friends or with our teammates. But if we continue on down, we can find here that we've got an ability right here to browse interesting calendars. And what this does is this gives us holiday calendars and take a look. So if you want to if you want to know about all of the national holidays in Belgium, you can install a Belgium holiday calendar in your Google Calendar. So there's all of these different holidays uh, for different countries. There's also and for religions as well. But here's something cool. There's also sports. So if you're a fan, as of course everybody that watches this channel of hockey and they're a fan of the National Hockey League and they want to install the Vancouver Canucks schedule, you can subscribe to the Vancouver Canucks schedule, and now I will have all of the Canuck home or Canuck hockey games 
automatically placed on my calendar. It's pretty cool. And there's other calendars as well. If we go to more, we can have uh, the different the Hebrew calendar, phase of the moon, star date, sunrise, sunset. We can install those sorts of calendars as well. So the calendar feature, nice to install, but I'm sorry, Gord, not customizable. And that brings our this episode of Ask Dotto Tech to a close. I hope that you've enjoyed it and found it to be tremendously useful. I will point out that this particular video was brought to you ad-free. That's because uh, it's supported by our friends at Patreon. See, there's three ways to stay in touch with us here on Dotto Tech and to support us. The first way is, of course, subscribe to this channel on YouTube. Secondly, subscribe to our newsletter, and then you hear about all of our upcoming live events. And third is you can support us fiscally through Patreon. It's a crowdfunding site where people who decide that they want to support Dotto Tech jump on board and support us. But it's not all one-sided. Oh, no, no, no. You help me create content, which is great, but you also gain access to some wonderful perks, including our courses. So I encourage you to drop by our Patreon page. That is it for this episode of Ask Dotto Tech. I encourage you, ask questions in the comments area in YouTube. I will endeavor to do my best to answer all of your questions. Until next time, I am Steve Dotto. Have fun storming a castle.